Welcome back to part two of Anniversary Summer Film Lovers. I'm the director and this is Clapboard Reviews where I call the shots. You know, I'm just tooting my own horn when I say that our generation was the best in terms of film and entertainment. We got Power Rangers, Batman, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Nicktoons, Jurassic Park, and great movies from Disney and new companies like DreamWorks and Pixar. What do kids today have? Pretty much the same thing. Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, Batman, Transformers, Nicktoons, Jurassic Park, and great movies from Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks. So, uh, between our two generations, you're welcome. One of the capstones of the 90s was the use of CGI, most notably in Jurassic Park, where they mixed in practical effects with new computer ones. When that came out, no one thought it could be topped. They really brought creatures that had been dead for millions of years to life. Nothing could come close. Until the year 1995. Yep, just two years after Jurassic Park's release, we witnessed another groundbreaking achievement in cinema, a feature-length animated film that was done entirely with computers. A full-length computer animated film that was practically unheard of at the time. This movie blew my effin' mind when I was little. What's great about Toy Story is that they could have just made a computer animated film and it would have gotten enough attention just on its novelty alone. But instead, the developers actually did put a lot of thought into it, actually creating a story out of the idea instead of just creating the movie around the idea. And it started a lot of Pixar trademarks, like John Ratzenberg, that Starball, the Luxo Lamp, and my favorite trademark of all, mirrored characters. A majority of Pixar movies have leading characters with parallel antagonists. Characters that actually represent what the main character could turn into. And I love those kinds of stories. Even though they weren't the main focus of the movie, the characters Andy and Sid were actually the first of these characters. Both of them play with toys but have different versions of playing, whereas Andy's is more lighthearted and fun, Sid's is... well, just plain cruel. Which kind of makes it... not fun, really actually not even couldn't even call it playing more like evil shenanigans and even to this day pixar continues to use this the sequels did it the incredibles did it monsters inc cars for all the criticism it gets wally brave they all had those kinds of characters even recent disney movies like wreck it ralph and big hero 6 use this and that's because we can really see the character's growth at the end by seeing the kind of person they could have been had they continued on their path. Nowadays, the movie is kind of dated. The animation was still in its early stages and made everything, including the toys, look plastic, which was the main reason why they made a movie about toys. But back then, we were so blown away by what we saw, we just didn't care. And I still don't care because the nostalgic value is so high on this that I'm even willing to overlook the creepy blinking. And even though I've heard a lot of complaints about him, I still enjoy Randy Newman's songs and his score. And really, I got nothing left to say about this, so I'm just gonna end it right here. Thank you all for joining me in part two of Anniversary Summer. Be sure to tune in next month. I'll be right back after I finish visiting a friend in Hill Valley. <laughs>